Hi there guys, um, exciting exciting today. So we've got this just delivered, which is my replacement laptop. So I'm just gonna tear straight into this and get this open. And because I think watching somebody open a box is pretty damn boring, I'm gonna be back in a second. So here we are, nice simple box, just slightly bigger than the actual laptop itself. Uh, nothing worth talking about or noting on the box itself. And relatively simple packaging. Protected end pieces, and the laptop's wrapped up on the paperwork, and then obviously the power adapter over here. So we'll throw that aside for now, because that's the boring bit. This is the bit we're interested in. Um, right, let's, uh, what we've got here is plastic, but a really nice kind of textured pattern. And that follows all the way around the laptop. It's a sealed battery, um, so it's not removable in the sense of your typical push a clip and pop it out kind of thing but uh, that's not really such a huge concern um, so what have we got on this side we've got the try and get that to focus in on this side we've got the DVD recorder CD USB port on this side we've got a VGA port um, an Ethernet port an HDMI port and a couple of USB ports and this little thing here which is the security lock and on the front we've got a card reader for your SD cards. Pop that uh, full size keyboard, separate keypad over here and we've got a nice size trackpad, I like the size of that, we'll see how that operates in a little while. Uh, Intel Core i5 processor and over here a little bit of information, it's Skype certified, woohoo. Ultra fast wireless speed, um, precision touchpad, DVD RW drive with MDIS support, Acer True Harmony, which is something to do with the sound, Skype certified, and it is the Acer Aspire F15 F557150SO. Uh, Intel Core i5 processor, 5200U processor, which is a dual core um, 2.2 gigahertz, I think. Um, Intel HD graphics, uh, 8 gig DDR3 memory, and a thousand gigabyte, one thousand gigabyte, a terabyte hard drive, which is, um, I suppose, fairly standard for most things now. You do still get some with 500 gig and 750 gig drives, I guess. But anyway, so uh, that's that. Um, the reason for getting this, my old laptop unfortunately was damaged um, due to a water leak. And, uh, but I'd been fancying getting a replacement laptop for a little while anyway, so what I did is I, uh, I took the money that I would have been spending on that and basically sort of upgraded, uh, basically I looked for something a little bit more expensive because I want something that will handle video processing on Adobe Premiere. Now this doesn't quite fit um, Adobe Premiere CS4's criteria, which is, uh, which is the um, Adobe Premiere package that I have. Uh, however, the only thing it's sort of really sorely lacking on are the graphics. And to get a laptop with, the, with decent spec graphics, I'm looking at adding an extra two or three hundred quid on top of what I paid for this, which is something I cannot do. So we're going to see how well this process of video. Hopefully, it'll be adequate. I'm not looking for anything light and fast. But uh, that's the reason for this. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this whole thing set up. Uh, for any of you that are interested, I will do a video on the actual first startup and setup procedure, um, which I will probably post separately because that's really the kind of thing that I'm sure not many people want to see. But if you do want to see, I'll post that up there separately so you can have a look at what's involved after you've taken one out of the box and, and gone through the setup. So there you are. Following on from the initial unboxing and setting up of the laptop, um, it's now been set up, uh, as you can see the laptop's here just to show you before I zoom onto the screen there. Um, 
and I'm going to stay focused on the screen because we've now got uh, Premiere Pro 4 installed and uh, I'm going to go ahead and open that and we're going to create a new project Virago Maintenance Work and we're going to OK that and then over here we've got a choice of um, presets um, AVCHD DV24P, DVNTSC, DVPAL, etc, etc, etc. We're going to HDV and we're going to select 720p 30 frames per second, which is what my camcorder is filming in. We're going to OK that and allow it to render its screen. Now as you can see so far it's doing quite well. So what I'm going to do is compile a bit of a timeline and, um, and then we're going to come back to that once I've got a few pieces uh, in the timeline down here and, and we're going to start rendering the video for its first playback and see how it does. So we've got the black background and the title bar done so far and that's been placed into the timeline. I'm just going to hit enter to render that and this should render quite quickly because this is quite simple stuff just created in the software and uh, so far so good on that one. That one plays through nicely. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually import some uh, some files right click on there import and we're going to look in the from camcorder and we're going to drop that file into there I'm going to do a bit of chopping and edits on this drop some frames down into the timeline down here and uh, and then we're going to come back and see how well that renders Right, so we're back with approximately eight minutes of footage, maybe just a little over there. And this has all been inserted into the timeline and it's had the, um, the dissolves between frames and the intro, the outro, everything else. I'm just going to hit the enter button and let that render and we'll see how well that does. Now bear in mind on this, there are no fancy effects, there's no slow-mo, there's no speeded up video um, and, uh, and there's nothing particularly fancy uh, with regards to the wipes, I just use a fade to black wipe as a standard. So um, there's nothing fancy for it to really struggle with. But I've got to say, for a, a laptop that's not actually intended or designed for this kind of use and oh, considering... Yes. Adobe's basic specifications requirements I think that is doing really well indeed so far in this video you've seen the unboxing of the Acer laptop and you've seen the laptop in use can a laptop a budget laptop like this that's typically under spec be used for editing YouTube video now in a bit of a Google search for this I was directed to a few forums and, uh, and an Adobe forum in particular I remember looking through and being absolutely astounded by the snobbishness of some of the people posting on there to some of the potential new users to this software and to video editing that could very well have been lost to this hobby because of the snobbishness of some of the people posting on there. I, there, were, there were comments from, you know, I, obviously I'm not going to start naming any names or anything, but there were comments just saying outright, no, absolutely not, this is nowhere near good enough, it will take weeks to edit a video, you need, you know, you're, uh, at basic you need a, a striped RAID array 
of 10 hard drives running in turbo mode on a supercharged PC and you know and, and okay I'm, I'm paraphrasing and, and exaggerating somewhat but you get the general idea it was ludicrous and it was a real kind of snobbish put down kind of attitude that I found as well. I get that Premiere Pro is an industry standard uh, professional video editing platform but that does not mean by any stretch of the imagination that it cannot be used by an amateur or a hobbyist such as myself and numerous others of you out there that will obviously if you're looking at this video you're probably asking the same kind of questions and just because it's a professional thing doesn't mean that you can't use it and enjoy it and, and get the most out of it either you know so anyway uh, because I wasn't really getting anywhere I thought I'll bite the bullet I'll go ahead I'll buy this machine this was um, reduced I was actually looking at i3 processor machines which were in my budget this one happened to come up uh, on offer and it was reduced and it sort of dropped into the i3 the high-end i3 range that I could afford but being an i5 faster processor it gave me that extra little edge so uh, which which sort of brought the processor speed up into Adobe system requirements so I thought I'll bite the bullet I'll go ahead and get it and I'll just give it a try and see how it does so how does it do well it does work it does the job it's uh, it, it works with the files it plays them smoothly it renders them smoothly it plays back faultlessly it doesn't take seconds to do it of course it doesn't it takes a little while but if you're not making video for a living and you're not on on really tight time schedules then it's absolutely fine this will do the job just fine at some point in the future as time and funds allow I would like to upgrade the hard drive to a 7200 rpm drive and perhaps double the RAM to 16 gigabytes uh, to give it a little bit more oomph in that department. I can't really do anything with the graphics. There's no way, to my knowledge, of, of adding an external graphics card to improve that side of it. But when all said and done, it processes pretty much as fast, maybe a little bit slower, than my current desktop machine, which is now quite a few years old, but still does the same job. So provided you've got an extra sort of couple of hours on top of the time you'd like to allocate yourself for editing the video um, you can just let it do its thing I mean as long as you're not hoping to, to multitask and say uh, browse the web watch a DVD um, and uh, I don't know uh, edit your online blog at the same time as you're processing it's fine it will do the job just fine it will process your files it will take a little while to get there it certainly won't take weeks it won't even take days a couple of hours uh, at the most for a 20 minute file in very high resolution I would say uh, for processing into a YouTube compatible format and that's the kind of thing that you can set going and then wander off and make yourself a drink go and read a book go for a walk watch something on TV do whatever you like because when all said and done there's nothing pressing or important it doesn't have to be uh, processed in 20 seconds unless this is a commercial venture and time is money and you are making video for a client and you have to get it done in that case you're obviously going to be looking at a whole different spectrum of machinery from your camcorder right to the machines that are doing the editing anyway so for all of you out there that have been asking the same questions as I was asking can a relatively budget spec laptop and I'll just go over the specifications again this is an Acer um, F557150SO laptop it is an Intel i5 processor a Core i5 processor 8 gigabytes of RAM a terabyte hard drive and um, Intel HD graphics 5500 so it's, it's onboard graphics but it's perfectly reasonable Windows 10 one final thing I'll add um, I've got to say um, I'm always a little bit wary about new things but I'm just going to kind of bring you in tight here so you can have a look at this this video that you see here is by a guy called uh, it's, it's called disable Windows 10 spying 
uh, Privacy and Security, and it's by a YouTube user called Barnacles Nerdgasm. Um, that's B A R N A C U L E S nerdgasm. Uh, the guy's obviously a bit of a computer geek and really knows his way around a computer system and clearly when you watch the video and you watch him sort of whipping through a few of the settings you can see how well practiced and well used he is to computer systems so he clearly knows what he's talking about and it goes through the entire process of setting Windows 10 up from scratch and how to disable all of the slightly dubious sounding and seeming um, security breach problems that you hear people talking about with Windows 10. So, shout out to this one here. Um, it's not often I recommend other videos uh, unless they particularly impress me as this one did. So anybody that's using Windows 10 also this applies if you've already got it installed. It tells you how to go through and disable various features and what have you. So a big shout out to this user. I'll put a link in the description under this video here so you can click on that and go to the video and watch it for anybody that's, that's wanting to know a little bit more about Windows 10 and how to disable the um, the features that are installed on there. So that concludes the can you use a budget laptop for Adobe Premiere Pro CS4 uh, video. Now obviously if you're talking CS5, CS6 I would suggest that they are potentially still usable on a laptop such as this but be prepared for them running a bit more slowly and certain functions of them, certainly high processing power functions of them, uh, struggling with. But for general video editing, uh, doing a bit of slow-mo and a bit of sort of audio swapping and, and bits and pieces for your typical YouTube video, this is absolutely fine, it's more than adequate and I think you'll be quite happy with it. So I hope this has been useful to you, thank you for watching and keep an eye out for the next video.